Hello guys and welcome to the 2016 Apocalypse Special. Yep, that's right, we're making it an annual thing and because the 2015 special was such a hit with you guys, we're bringing it back and I couldn't be more excited for this. This game is the culmination of months of planning and some incredible logistic and organisation uh, has gone into this. It's really been a, a feat of organisation trying to get this uh, organised because today we have over 30,000 points of orcs versus over 20,000 points of Imperial Guard. So a total of 50,000 points of plastic are going to be on the table today. That, my friends, is something special. All of it is painted and we're ready <laughs> to have what should be the highlight of the Commissar Wallach calendar each year. And that is our yearly apocalypse special. So you might be thinking... Um, Hang on a second, you said 30,000 points of orcs against 20,000 points of Imperium. How does that work? Well, we are doing a narrative scenario, and that is the orcs, an endless wave of orcs, are storming this Imperial city, which you can see here is connected to this board by this set of three bridges. So, there's going to be a lot of explaining here because it's a, a custom scenario here, but essentially, it's an attack defend style mission as I've sort of hinted at there. The Imperium have one objective, hold the city. The Orcs have one objective, they need to take it. And how this works is the Imperium score points purely for holding their ground. So each of these lines of defences, if they can keep them uh, held, so it's one line out here which is sort of light, sort of outer perimeter fence. Um, this one here, slightly more heavy, Aegis defence lines, and finally this last line here uh, of sort of bunkers and bastions, and it's also supported by these larger fortifications as well. Uh, if they can hold this, they get even more points. So points are scored by them holding that. The Orcs, uh, the way they gain points is they get boosts in points for taking each line as sort of one-offs, but also when they get into the city, at the end of the game, and it's a timed game, it's currently about 9.30, 10 o'clock on a Saturday morning. We're going to play through to 5pm on a Monday, so you're getting three days of apocalypse action. Uh, sorry guys, I know there's a lot to explain here, so um, more will come apparent as it goes along. But yes, to, to win the game, the Orcs not only have to take these objectives, um, they also have to storm across the bridges, and anything that has a transport capacity, be it stompers, battle wagons, uh, trucks, anything like that they can get across, that scores them more victory points. So they need that there by the end of the game. We also have a ton of secondaries. L just like last year, there is... Slay the Warlord, and each side has a War Master and three Warlords, with the Warlord Master being in Supreme Command. So, you get points for killing those. You get one point for Super Heavy Kills, exactly the same as last year. But also, we have additional um, strategic assets for the Imperium in the city, and there's going to be a mini sort of battle going on in the city. We have this Void Shield Generator, which has the ability to cast a Void Shield uh, token, uh, which is a strategic asset, out into there each turn. We have this Imperial statue, which while this is alive, the Imperium can choose to twin link uh, two things a turn. And we have this artillery piece uh, here. Now each of these is worth three victory points if they can be taken out. And we also have three sewer gratings. See those, and there's one there as well. Um, in the city, and the orcs can bring up infiltrators up through the sewer each turn. So then, I think that just about covers uh, the basis of the scenario. There are some other kind of special rules that might become apparent, like if uh, Yarrick and Gazgul can kill each other in a challenge, D6 victory points to each side, just like last year. We have some special rules like that, um, but we're trying to bring those up as the game goes on. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to take in there. It's quite a complex scenario. But basically the gist of it is we've got 50,000 points of plastic on the board today. Lots of things are going to blow up. Lots of things are going to die. we we'll are explain any rules as and when they come up. But that is the gist of the scenario. So this is going to be Orc deployment back here. And as you can see, I've got some very uh, scary things back here. 
There is a minefield as the first line of Imperial defence. Then we've got the um, outer defence, which is these chain link fences and sort of light kind of ruins into that more defensive line. And finally, the bigger fortifications at the back. Um, I think, I think that just about sets up the scenario then, guys. As I said, if you're a little bit confused about any of this, or explain how things work as it goes on. The Imperium, they have a disadvantage in points. The Orcs have got an extra 10k of points on them. But, in contrast, the Imperium are defending, which is an advantage, and they have these strategic assets. The Orcs don't have any strategic assets except one, and that is that it's going to be a never-ending tide of Orcs. Because what's going to happen is, at the end of each designated break, which we have at the end of each turn, the Orcs have a table to roll on, the table of the war. And we'll explain that when we get to it. But essentially, the orcs, each orc player can bring back a certain amount of orc casualties each turn. And we'll explain the table a bit later on. Um, and they can bring them just on from reserve. Um, so basically, the mission is how long can the Imperium hold out? Because it's going to never end. If we play forever, the orcs will eventually win because they can keep bringing stuff back from the dead, essentially. So the question is, can they hold out in the time limit, which is 5pm on the Monday? Also... Um, because bringing on stuff back here when the fight sort of moved all the way up here is a bit of an advantage, we're saying that once the this line has fallen, the Orcs can start bringing in um, troops here as like a drop zone, um, and they come in without scattering, but as though they've deep struck, so they can arrive there from the dead rather than coming on at the board edge. So then, to take each line, the Orcs need to get three units, and we're not counting flyers or skimmers, um, across each of these lines. Then the line counts as broken, and it can no longer provide victory points to the Imperium. So what you should get is a staggered effect of these lines kind of breaking and falling as the Imperium fall back. Once this third line has fallen, the Imperium can't score any more victory points, only secondaries. They can't score any for holding their lines because the lines are broken. So what you should have then is initially the Imperium holding these lines, racking up a big score. It's almost like cricket, they get a chance to bat, <laughs> they rack up a big score, but then after those lines are broken, they can't score any more points really, except for secondaries. And it's up to the Orcs to see if they can break the tally that's been racked up by the Imperium. So if you're watching the battle report and you're thinking, hang on a second, the Imperium are you know, quite far ahead early on, that's how it's meant to work. But equally, the Orcs then should have a chance to break that when they start breaking through at the end. Let's have a look at the Imperial Defenders. Right then guys, so 20,000 points of Imperial Guards. In fact, slightly over 20,000, more like 22,000. Uh, we just want the um, Orcs to have a 10k advantage. Um, so it goes all the way and stretches off down here into the distance, an absolutely vast vast collection of Imperial Guard across three Imperial Guard players. But we'll start out here with the stuff that I'm bringing to the fight. Uh, and we'll start with our War Master. So there's three Warlords per team. He is in overall Supreme Command. Um, and he is Commissar Yarrick. And there he's got a retinue of three Commissars. Uh, we've got Plasma Pistols on them, Power Swords, and then that one has a Power Fist. Um, also, I should say as well, in terms of formations, each player is bringing their own formations, be it from the Apocalypse book or whatever book they have, but each army has their own sort of army-wide bonus that you don't have to be in a formation in. Uh, we found that it became too complex trying to fit certain things into certain Decurions and other things wouldn't, and it became pretty uh, difficult. So the army-wide bonus for the Imperial Guard is all Guardsmen and all uh, Stormtroopers reroll ones and their hotshot las guns. Uh, and las guns, and also all orders of 3d6 lose the highest. So the bonus from that Cadian uh, battle group formation is just army wide, regardless of that. But any other formations uh, bonuses, you have to be in the formation to get it. So continuing on, then uh, we then have three priests, four Primaris psychers, uh, and they've got various upgrades. Uh, they've all taken the prescience as the primary primaris power and taken other upgrades from that discipline. Two units of veterans. We've got three flamers in one. We've got uh, three melters in the other and they're both in crime mirrors. We've got the Commissar Warwick subscriber platoon. Um, good to see them 
in action for the first time. And they've rolled, um, I think it's... Um, Knife fighters, so they get rending and an extra attack in close combat, which is great. Uh, and we've also got um, the head of the last chances. Does anyone know his name? Schaefer. Schaefer. We've got Schaefer there. It's, um, he's going to be leading them, which is cool. Uh, old, old model, but we're using the. Everyone's agreed to use the rules, even though they're sort of a bit out of date. Uh, and then we have the four assassins, and they are in the formation from the uh, Cadian. Um, the Monkai book, um, which means that they get certain bonuses for killing warlords and so much, so on. And there's um, quite a few warlords. We've got five rattlings, uh, and then a, a formation from the Apocalypse book. This is the Imperial Shield Infantry Platoon, but to be clear, that's not the Monkai one, that's the one from the Apocalypse book, which gives them D3 casualties back at the end of each break. Uh, Emperor Spear Aerial Company, their rules won't really make much um, of an impact today but at the same time that's free vendettas and then still part of the Emperor's Shield platoon we've got heavy weapons, that's two sets of auto cannons, one set of las cannons and some mortars and then um, the Cadian battle group, we have got one of those even though the formation bonuses are army wide um, leading it we've got Pask in a Punisher Backed with two executioners, uh, and he is one of our other warlords. And then we have an Empress Fist tank um, company uh, with the tank commander here, that in his squad, and then three squads of uh, of these guys, also with a uh, tech priest as part of the formation. Uh, and that means that it's a bubble of ballistic skill four, um, and also that he basically makes them venerable. So rolling. Uh, 2d6, choose the lowest for pens. Then we have a uh, Emperor's Wrath Artillery Company, which is the company commander in the Chimera. I won't bother going through upgrades because there's so much to get through. Um, the Tech Priest, and he's got Servitors with him. Then the Death Strike and this Basilisk, but also we're taking some of Sam's Basilisks that are over there and the Waverin is going with his Waverin, so there's more. There's four Basilisks in that formation, uh, which he can issue ignores cover orders on, which is pretty nice. Um, then we have uh, a Stormtrooper platoon with a command squad and two 10-man units of Zions. We've got Plasmas in there, we've got Melter Guns in there. And finally, rounding off my contingent, we have uh, a Shadow Sword, and we have a Bane Blade, which brings us nicely onto the forces uh, that Dom is bringing, uh, because he's got two Bane Blades in there, and together they're forming a Bane Blade company. So over to your collection. Yeah, so, so starting up here, we've got a uh, platoon with three Guardsmen squads over there with plasma guns. Uh, we've got the platoon HQ, and three special weapon squads with uh, flamers and melters. We've got a Salamander scout vehicle there. That's one platoon. So on the next shelf then, we've got our heavy weapon platoon down here. So you've got bolters, mortars, missile launchers, another platoon command there, two scout sentinels, and two squads of guardsmen with missile launchers and plasmas. Then on the bottom shelf here, we have got two squads of veterans in the chimeras with flamers and melters, uh, with the overall command down here. Yeah, so that's my, my warlord. Um, his warlord trait. And he's got old grudges, so mm. yeah, could be useful, we'll see. And yeah. we got a, a squad of scions there with a melter gun. They'll be melt, uh, mounted up in the Vendetta, which is there. And as we'll say, we've got two Bane Blades here. Yeah, we're joining, joining forces to make that Bane Blade company, exactly. which gives us some nice bonuses. Very nice. Got another Shadow Sword. We have got a formation here with the... Um, Sentinels, so we've got three squadrons of Sentinels, two armoured and one scout, and that is the Recon Talon. So that's very nice, being able to give them orders. Then moving down, we have got, over here we've got a steel host formation here. So we've got a command squad and then three separate Lehman Russes there, and a, a Hydra. We have then got three Hellhounds, all different variants there. And over here we've got four standard Lehman Russes, one exterminator, and uh, two demolishers there. And I think that's all my bits. Cool. Um, should say as well, obviously this is a um, special guest. They've been on the channel before, but Black Toad Studio have come down 
Uh, if you haven't already, guys, make sure you go and check them out. Um, going to be heavily involved in the fighting today on both sides, on the Orc side as well, but we'll come to that in a second. So, moving over to the forces of the Praetorians. Yeah, so leading the Praetorians today is Captain Kane. So for him, we're using the uh, Creed rules, but just to give it the army a bit of flavour. Just um, So yeah, so he's got... So it's the Apocalypse formation for Creed, where he takes the Bastion, yes. is that right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so for the formation then, you have to take uh, Brook uh, as a regimental standard, and the three... Um, attachments, so the officer of the fleet, who's going to be doing nothing today. Uh, the master of ordnance, he's got one um, ordnance blast, but it gets D3 extra as part of the formation. And then also we have the astropath. Um, and they've got a missile launcher and yeah, the vox caster. Uh, Lord Commissar, he's got the blade of conquest. And if we just move over left and right, so we've got at the back the basilisks that are going with wheels. Um, yeah, and one of the Waverons from mine yeah, will join this swap. lot, so we're sort of doing a swap. Yeah, so, and then we've got the, so I'll have two squadrons of Wyverns, um, yeah, uh, so four Wyverns. Uh, the, oh, we got this wrong last year, the Exterminators, exterminators I believe. Exterminators, yeah, with the Twinling Gorta cannons, um, yeah, three of them, and they've, they've got a tank commander as well. The next squadron, tank commander and punisher, with two battle cannons, and at the back, we've got another super heavy. Queen Liz, the Stormlord. <laughs> um, yeah, that's just got the Vulcan Mega Bar, uh, the Laz Cannons, and all the bolt guns. Uh, moving over, we've got 30 Rough Riders. Uh, each squad's got a melt, two melter guns, and the Sergeant's got melt with bombs, I believe. Nice. Uh, back then, moving forward, we've got a 50 block man blob squad with four grenade launchers, uh, three auto cannons, and a Vox Caster. And they've also got a Commissar in there. Uh, mortar squad, uh, platoon command squad with uh, plasma guns, fox caster, heavy flamer, and a level two psyker, heavy bolt squad. Uh, moving over, we've got the second platoon command squad, bolter, three melter guns, psyker, vox caster, and then moving on, we've got the another thirty man blob squad, three las cannons, three flamers, and a commissar. Uh, and then if you move to the Toroxes, they've got the, the Scottish Highland Vets with shotguns and three melter guns. Uh, yeah, and they've also got Toroxes as a, as a transport. We've also got um, six Bulgrins, three with the Bruce shields and I forget the name of the batons, and then three with the grenade launchers and the slab shields. And they've got a priest and a commissar with power fist. Nice. Ogre, uh, just a standard Ogrens there, and then this is my first formation, or my second formation, sorry, I've got the Scion Airborne formation, so you've got four Valkyries, three standard squads with melter guns, uh, one's got a plasma gun, and then the command squad has to have take a Commissar, and that's got three hotshot volley guns. And then moving over, you've got the second formation, which is the Kachan Ambush Patrol, so we've got a 50 man blob squad, Five missile launchers, five flamers. Each of the sergeants got a power sword and a plasma pistol. Yeah, and the bonus for that formation is they get stealth and shrouded. No, I don't think it's stealth and shrouded. I think it's plus one to the cover save until yeah. they move or shoot. Yeah, that's it. And then they also get trip wires when something attacks them, yeah, doesn't so it? Yeah. Basically, snare mines. Yeah. Uh, if that's not 100 percent right, we will check yeah, that. But it's yeah. good. Yeah. Quote us on that. Um, you've got the mortar squad as well, part of that platoon, and then the uh, command squad's got um, guy with power fists. Three flamers and a vox caster. The company leading this sort of catch out force, we've got Strachan with the regimental standard, um, a medic and a heavy flamer, and then Nork the Dog. Yeah, and then Nork the Dog is going to run with Yarrick because yeah, yeah. he's the supreme commander, so he needs to be protected. <laughs> yeah, uh, you got the vet and in the formation, you have to take one to three veteran squads, which can two. One's got shotguns, melter guns, and the second one's got um, Harker and all the sniper rifles with a heavy flamer. We've got a one executioner variant, all the plasma gun sponsors. Mm -hmm. Two armoured sentinels, and at the back there we've got um, the Vendetta Spitfire. And on the back there, so it's only small. And then we've also got the Avenger 
yeah. something or other, but it's got all the bells and whistles. The Avenger fighter. We're not, That's the one, yeah. yeah. we'll double check its name in a second. Yes. But that concludes the Force of the Imperium. As I've said, over 20,000 points. Really staggeringly large amount of points on the table. And what I particularly like about it is we've got such a, a variety of Imperial regiments. We've got Catachan forces down here. We've got the Praetorians in here with some Scottish Highlanders. <laughs> we've got the... Um, Rough Riders, who look like they're perhaps from a different regiment. So we're here, Dom, do your, uh, does your regiment have a particular yeah, name? Yeah, we're the uh, Kitchener 83rd Battle Group. Yeah, and then down to here, we've got the 812th Cadian Regiment. So really a mix of Cadian regiments, we've got Catachans in there, we've got Praetorians. It's a real um, combined effort from the Imperial forces. Anyway guys, without further ado, let's look at the Orc Army. Right, and now we move on to the Orc host, and it is staggeringly huge. This isn't even all of it. As we move around, this is only a tiny, tiny amount of it. As we move around, it continues over here, and we've got shelves worth in here. We've got how many stompers in the Orc army? Ish? We think there's about six. And that's not even it, we've also got some in here as well, <laughs> in the cupboards, yeah, even more stompers. Oh, and that guy up there as well, so difficult to fit all of this on, it's preposterously large amount of orcs. Um, but we'll start here with the detachment that Rob is bringing, uh, and we'll start over here with his collection of uh, HQs. Okay, here's my HQs, I've got three weird boys playing guitars. Uh, I've got three weird boys playing guitars, uh, two war bosses there, every armour, power claws. One of them's wearing the thinking cap though, which uh, has given him two warlord traits. Got a pain boy there with a grotto orderly. Those are my HQs. Moving on, I've got a squad of 20 Gretchen, lovely, nice and standard. Uh, 10 um, looters. And then 70 boys um, who are going into the big green tide formation, obviously, uh, or the several green tide formations. <laughs> um, over here we got another 15 knobs who are going to be distributed roughly around all the other formations uh, and 17 storm boys and oh yes at the front we got the vehicles three uh, trucks and one battle wagon with some sort of cannon on it it's a, it's a kill cannon or a super cannon some sort of cannon a cannon Okay, brilliant. Uh, we were saying, in, in a lot of the smaller point games you do, this actually looks like a really big model, like compared to a boy, it's quite a big model. But then when you sort of <laughs> compare it to the amount that's going to be on the board, it's tiny in comparison. Uh, now we're going to look over at the, uh, the forces that Sam, who's playing on the Imperial side, but he's contributed to the massive Orc War. So, uh, where would you like to start? Uh, we'll start just with a war boss. Um, just the standard war boss. Everything in this army is WYSIWYG, so I've lent it to John. So yeah, that is a, that's a policy across the board for the yeah. whole game. Everything should be WYSIWYG. Yeah, so, just, uh, so power claw, uh, big shooter, weird boy, and pain boy. We've got these the, the little purple knobs, I call them, but they're uh, just uh, I think there's ten knobs in there with four power fists. Um, yeah, you don't have to be exact about yeah, upgrades. Yeah. We're just sort uh, of there's six bikes, one with a big chopper. 30 grots, 20 slugger, no, slugger and chopper boys. Yeah, the slugger boys. Yeah, um, 11 knobs with a big knob with a boss pole, 12 uh, slugger chopping boys, another 12, one's got power claw, another 12, one's got a big chopper, 10 shoot boys, 5 mech guns, tractor cannon, 2 zap guns, a lobber and a chopper, something else, uh, 14 looters. Uh, seven or eight burner boys and three mech guns. Three mega knobs with kill saws there. Five storm boys. Seven knobs, one's got a boss pole and the big knob's got a big chopper. Uh, moving on to the vehicles, we've got these three trucks. Um, six kill cans. And at the end over there we've got a battle wagon with a cannon. At the back there we've got Gorkonaut, I think it's called. Uh, we've got three death dreads, uh, mm -hmm. we've got weapons assorted, and mm -hmm. we've also got finishing off this sort of detachment, we've got four death copters with the twin link missile launchers. Right. And is it a, a policy across the whole orc army that all boys and knobs have heavy armour? 
Yeah. Yes. Across every collect, yeah. So every single boy you see here is heavy armor. Yeah, every single vehicle that can take it has got quad riggers. Okay. Yeah, Great. Um, and then we move over to another our second member of Black Toad Studio. So once again, guys, make sure you go check him out. This is Tom's Orc contingent. Yeah. So we've got Warboss, Warboss Mazdros in the middle there with his squad of Mega Knobs and a Pain Boy. At the front here, we've got 80 boys uh, with a couple of yes, knobs, power claws, etc. Um, we have a Morkanaut at the back here. Uh, three Death Dreads with varying sorted weaponry, a Stomper at the back, uh, and also six Kill Cans with varying weapons again. Then we've got uh, obviously three Flyers back here, two Blitzer Bombers, and one Burner Bomber. Uh, varying things we go into formations as well, obviously. But, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of formations yes. on either side. I think we had a list of about 10 exactly. for the Imperium, and so probably even more for the Orcs. Indeed. So that, that covers this contingent uh, from. Uh, Sam's Orcs, Rob's Orcs and Tom's Orcs. But now we move over to John's vast, vast contribution. Alright, so uh, first of all we've got Custom Stomper. Um, he's got uh, the couple of um, Burst of Cannons, Death Arsenal, a couple of Death Guns, Gaze and Mork and a Flame Belcher. Um, got the uh, squadron of planes, we're taking them in the Burner Bomber uh, Squadron which gives them plus one strength to their burner bombs. There's three of them there. Daka jet at the front. Uh, he's in a Daka jet squadron with two other ones uh, on the shelves, and they get uh, tank hunter against other flyers. Skullhammer battle fortress. Um, the blaster bomber behind them. Um, yeah, and we've got the big mech stomper, and he's fully loaded. Couple of death uh, cannons and lifter dropper. You know, we see what you get on in case of mork. Behind him, regular stomper. So dwarfed. Looks tiny, that regular stomper in comparison. He said there's probably about six in the York Force, isn't there? Yeah, six in total. Six stompers, that's insane. I mean, there's three there. <laughs> yeah, we've got the Gargantuan Squig off up here. These really super cannons and big shooters. Right, then out here, Stomper. Uh, big Squig off. He's rolled a five on the combat drugs table, so he's got feeling of pain. He's got a cannon. Kill Crusher. Um, then we've got a couple of big tracks with super cannons, um, a load of trucks. Um, we've got a kill burster here, pirate ship. Um, prop mega tanks with custom mega blasters, um, mech, um, mech guns, lobbers, zap guns, cannons. Um, then over here we've got some war buggies with rockets, uh, the grot mega tank, or we've got zookas. Um, here's the Stormboy knobs here, they've got power claws and they, the Stormboys down below, there's seven units of uh, Stormboys in this one, they're all part of Stormer Elite so they get deep strike and charge on, on the same turn. Then we've got um, some war bosses, Nasdreg there, um, and another war boss, Big Mech Custom Force Field, got loads of them throughout the force. Knob Bikers, Pain Boy, War Boss, a sad snark there. Knob bikers, war boss, pain boy, war banners, as you see, a load of knobs at the top, big mechs with custom force fields, and the leader of it all, Giles Gould. Yep, he is the overall war master for the yep. York side. Did we mention um, the stomper and stuff down here? Did you yeah, cover that? Yeah, stomper, uh, big squig off and all that. So cool, good stuff. Um, next shelf. So just, work. just go over and generally, just boys. You know, as far as the eyes can see, <laughs> everything's what you see is what you get. Then looters, storm boys, more boys, knobs here, storm boys here, tank busters, commandos, burner boys, flash gits. Um, going down, <laughs> going down, 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 down. Um, tank busters down there. Some of the evil sons tank busters. Then we've got a load of different characters. There, mechs, pain boys, Gruck face ripper, mega knobs, weird boys, guys with shuck attack gun, custom force fields, uh, mega knobs, death copters, more death copters, war copter, more daca jets. Couple of daca jets down there. Um, couple of the mega dreads. This is the bottom half of the stomper. He's going to be put together as the, as the custom stomper. We'll show you that in a minute uh, when we get him out. Um, That's his other half, isn't yeah, it, down there? Uh, kill, kill burster here. And then finally, up to the last bit, a load of grots, and some of these are the grot crew for the for the mech guns. Uh, another war buggy, some knob bikers, uh, 
War Boss again, Pain Boy. Got the Lifter Dropper Wagon, which looks deadly, but he's not, as you know that will say. War Copter, another War Copter, Killer Cans, Killer Cans, and Death Dreads. Wow. So, well done to John for summing up 20, <laughs> almost 20,000 points on his own there. And uh, I think that's probably another another 10,000 over here. So just to clarify then, um, Gazagal is the overall war master. Who are your three warlords? Um, one of them is the war boss, who's wearing the thinking cap. Mm -hmm. The other ones, uh, well, was the war boss in the left in front of the so war So these guys are also warlords. And then who is the other warlord over here? We've got a Nasdaq, so bad moon mark. So this guy, yep. and then with Yitgazagal in supreme command. Yep. And are there any other points to note regarding special rules or things you've rolled for, or anything interesting? Yes, the Killer Can formation. So all Death Treads and uh, Killer Can's going to be part of it. It's one from the Apocalypse book. Um, we rolled a five, which gives them a five up in bun for all cans of Death Treads, which is really nice. Uh, Big Swan, as I said, he's, got, he's ended up feeling a pain. Um, and with a fair Warlord traits we've rolled. Move through cover. We've got Move Through Cover and stealth ruins for the army wide. We've got first turn we can make it night vision. Uh, we can make it night fighting but we get night vision and we've got the seeds, yeah. the roll and Garstall's got a couple of personal ones. He's got Mastercraft and his claw and rage. Yeah then for the for the Imperium, Yarrick and Pask have their own ones. The other warlords, uh, we've got rerolling CC initiative, yeah. uh, an extra order and that's on Creed. Yeah. Both of those two he gets two. And all grudges on my commander. Yeah, you mentioned at the time, didn't you? So, I think we are ready to do some roll offs, then, guys. Right, then, so we are almost ready to start this game. Big, big roll, though. Who is going first? Then, after we've done that roll, we'll deploy, and then there'll be a seized initiative roll as well. So, uh, orcs are rolling green dice, Imperium are red dice. Who's going first? For the Emperor! Oh, oh orcs' choice. <laughs> oh, God, first! Yeah, yeah we got first. <laughs> the orcs are going first. So, we'll get back to you. The orcs can deploy now, the Imperium will deploy, and then it will be uh, a seized initiative roll. Right then, both sides have deployed, and I think this has to be, probably, completely honestly, the most spectacular sight I've seen on a 40k tabletop, if I say so myself. This looks incredible. 20,000 points of Imperium, or slightly over, versus 30,000 points of Orcs. So many Orcs, that of course, only a small, this is merely a facade, most of their stuff is actually in reserve. And if we look through, even so, this is littered with incredible uh, super heavy vehicles and tanks. You know, we've got the massive squig off there. We've got a couple of super heavy tanks here. We've got killer cans and death dreads filling in the gaps. This big mech stomper, another stomper. Over here, a vortex missile battery, or orcified one. Um, void shield generator, more of uh, these like buggies um, with some mega dreads. Um, there's gorkonauts mixed in here. These are battle wagons and we've got even more stompers here but as I've said most of their stuff is actually in reserve um, they can bring it on you know when this stuff moves up on turn two they can bring more on or equally they can also bring it up through the sewer grates later on the imperial defense up front we've got the catachans and their formation granting them extra cover and anything that tries to charge through here has to take some dangerous train checks. The back was Sentinels, and then over here uh, we've got a few more Catachans, uh, but we've also got the Subscriber Platoon uh, dug in there, um, and more Sentinels and some Demolishers up front. Then, along this sort of centre line, massed infantry, as we see the Praetorians, and then down there are the 812th Mycadians. Um, Further back, we've got massed firepower from the Russes, um, and we've got one of the Shadow Swords. The Baneblade formation has stacked themselves up together there. Uh, now, it might seem like a really ludicrously silly idea because they're 
if they blow up they could you know sort of potentially take out the ones next to them or do some real damage but actually because uh, we've got the void shield generator how that works is we can place the void shield and they can't be shot at so that's uh i'll give away that's that's what we're sort of intending to do um we've also got the icarus last cannon here man and creed uh is up there um up top we're sort of counting that as his um bastion then round this side we've got another shadow sword and the emperor's wrath artillery formation is back here the macro cannon uh, being manned by some of the Praetorians and we've got the start of that Emperor's Fist tank company so those are both ballistic skill 4 uh, and we've got some tech priests in there as well then if we move back to the city we've got the steel host formation massed over here I'm saying massed a lot just because there's so much grouped together on this board various infantry squads in front waverons here um, more massed infantry and we've got the Vindicare Assassin and some snipers up here and the other assassins, we've got two in there and uh, I think that's the Aversa there as well Rough Riders and the Stormlord there with the Ogrins inside and Pask is back here so I think that covers the deployment absolutely staggering <laughs> the amount on this board really really just impressive to look at um, one thing we're not sure we made entirely clear, the three Warlords for the Imperium, we've got Pask, we've got um, Creed, we've got um, in there the Warlord, what is he, Company Commander? Company Commander. Yep, another Warlord. And then overall command, the War Master is Commissar Yarrick, who's in that bunker uh, in the centre of your screen there. Only other thing perhaps should make clear as well, uh, we said that the army-wide bonus for the Imperium is re-rolling ones on last guns and hotshot last guns went to hit, and also orders on 3d6 loses the highest. The bonus for the orcs is um, obviously that strategic asset um, of bringing stuff back from the dead, and we've got off three strategic assets in the city. But their army-wide buff is that they can call a war every single turn, uh, which in itself is really good. But it's made even better. Because they've got Gazagul Thraka, whose Warlord trait means that on the turn you call a war, your all boys are fearless, or all your orc units are fearless. So these guys are fearless, uh, and they'll be calling a war every turn, which is a massive, massive advantage, or massive, massive bonus to them. Um, but that doesn't apply in the city. Also, there are void shields, powerful void shields over the city, so nothing can fire into the city, be it Imperial stuff firing back, or orc stuff guys i think we are just about ready to start this so orcs will be going first unless the imperium can seize now it's not just a regular seize because one of our warlord traits i believe it's one of creeds he rolled on strategic and he can seize on a five also as well as that we also can re-roll it because of one of the assassins special rules here so five up re-rolling can we seize Right then, so we're about to roll the seize the initiative roll. The, everyone has stood up because this is a very, very tense moment. As I said, five up. If we don't get it, we roll. But this is so, so crucial. Five up. The Emperor protects. Yes! Hey! <laughs> the Imperium have seized. <laughs> Imperial turn one. Coming right up.